Hello, everyone. This is Arno Nakaha. You are tuning in into the Top Coach Academy, uh, where we assemble all the top leaders from across the network to share on topics that are important to you as a leader, to you as a coach, really any topic um, that will help you grow your business. So we're extremely excited for today. We've got a phenomenal coach that is joining us today. Angie Belmar from Ottawa, the capital city, is here with us. Um, we are excited to have a ton of diamonds that are really coming from across the board here, in, um, here on the call. And um, we're really pleased um, with, with what Angie has done and um, she's sharing a ton of things. Now, um, as we get started, we're going to go over her story and a bit about how she got started. And then we're going to go into exactly what she's doing to brand herself and to have built an incredible business over social media. Um, and so, Angie, if you don't mind just sharing a bit about your beginning um, of how you got started, uh, the floor is yours. Awesome. Um, I have kind of an interesting story. I feel like it's different from a lot of people's. I don't know. I feel like everybody thinks that. But my story is definitely a funny one. And I like starting with it because a lot of people, I feel, um, can relate in a certain sense. I'm going to explain uh, why that is. So I started my entire journey, I guess, with coaching by a trip to Walmart, which was very impromptu and suggested by my mother after I had been in the hospital three times in a row in the emergency room. They didn't know what was wrong with me. There was a series of tests done, and it was, it was bad, basically. Um, my husband's in the other room. I'm sure he can attest that after long nights staying in the hospital with me. And after the third time, we were like, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's wrong with you. And my mom, who is awesome, but so blunt, just said, Angie, I love you, but popcorn is not a food group. And maybe try eating a salad and maybe try doing a workout. How about that? And I was by no means overweight, which almost made it worse. Like I had no physical signs of being unhealthy. Um, I was what you call skinny fat. And I just, I was awful. My insides were awful. So I ended up in the hospital for various reasons that they couldn't figure out. And it obviously had to do with what I was putting into my body and how much exercise I was getting in, which was nothing and popcorn and Coca-Cola and pizza. So I really took that to heart. And I don't know why what she said resonated with me, but I listened to her and what she suggested Not ten dollars. So the whole story of how you guys can relate is you probably have challengers that have maybe purchased something from Amazon. I see it all the time in these groups that oh I have a challenger that posted off, that purchased their program off Amazon or off eBay or whatever. We're in a business of helping people and I think that my upline coach today is so happy that she helped me even though I had purchased my program at Walmart and it was like whatever. It was ages ago. And I had it and I said I was ready and I didn't even have Shakeology. I was one of those customers. And I'm sure you guys have had those. So I've had them and my rule of thumb is that I was one of those people and we're in the business of helping people first and foremost. So give them a chance. You don't ever know if they'll become a top Canadian coach. I sure didn't think I would, but I, something came of it. So from there, I ended up doing Insanity. It killed me. I did, I did 30 days of Insanity and for anybody that's done it, it gets harder on the 30th day, if that's even flipping possible. So I quit. Um, and I ended up starting up again in December with Turbo Fire. And that was the real beginning of my journey, which really started, I was not a coach at this point either. I was still a challenger that was just kind of holding myself accountable by posting pictures on Instagram, which you guys might know me from. And I really built my business through Instagram. And it really started from those pictures that I used to post ages ago. And if you guys want a good laugh, go scroll to the bottom of my Instagram feed and you can see them. And I used to get one like on those pictures and it was me liking it and they were not great, but it's what fueled me and it's how I stayed accountable to my workout. Even though maybe nobody cared, I'm sure that there was at least one person watching and that's really how this all stemmed. And that's how I met my upline coach. And she introduced me to the idea of coaching at the time. I said, absolutely not. And it took her four months to 
convince me and for me to convince myself that I could do something like this. And the rest from there, once I made the commitment to start, it took me a couple of months, months to get going and really get my mindset right. I would say the real shift was when I decided to go to Summit, if I'm being real. So for those of you that are considering going to Summit next year, I would say go. That was the real turning point for me in my business. And I know it was for a lot of my coaches. And that was really the, like the very synopsized version as to how I became a coach. So I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to ask me in terms of my story. That's pretty much it. That's pretty cool. So when you went to summit and what summit did you go to? Is that the 2013 summit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and with that, you went in primarily just to kind of see the trainers. I mean, like what was the aha for you? Because you know, obviously something happened. Yeah. I was a new coach and it's so looking back, it's so funny. I, I feel like I was going to laugh. Um, so my big reason to go to summit was to do turbo fire live and insanity live. I was not even going to learn about coaching or to learn about how to better my business. I just wanted to do a live workout with Shalene Johnson. And I really, really wanted to go to the core and I really wanted some beach body gear. I'm not even kidding. And we got so much more. My husband came with me who was not a coach at the time. He came as, I guess you can first bring a person that's not a coach. So we did that and he loved it too. And we ended up sitting in on general session. And I remember the moment that I thought that like that everything shifted was when they brought out the coaches that are in the millionaires club and we kind of tapped each other and he goes, are they millionaires? And I was like, I guess so. And then they kept coming out. Like it was crazy. So we really realized in that moment that this is the real deal. And when you meet the people that you saw on stage that are in the millionaires club at the parties at the success club party, I was my uplines uh, guest to the success club party. So I got to meet these people and then you realize that they're real normal people with no special sauce to them. Like they're just a normal person. That's whenever it really clicked for me that I could do this too. And I met Carl Deichler. And it scared the pants off of me. But I knew that one day I would meet him and it wouldn't be awkward. And I would be one of those top coaches that were like talking with him like they were friends. And it just really, going to those parties and going to Summit and seeing the people that were real made it all possible for me. Well, you're as real as it gets. <laughs> um, you know, love, love you and Andre. You know, you just, you, you're just salt to the earth. Um, you know, down south here. That's how we refer to it. <laughs> people um, and we appreciate all that you've done and, and what you're going to share today so we're now going to jump in into your topic which which is step seven steps to build your social media branding so I'd love for you to go into that um, as we're, as Angie's going into that if you have questions type them in as she's talking uh, we're going to go and answer all those questions we want to an answer as many questions as possible within the time frame that we have and so angie why don't you take it away walk us through exactly what those seven steps are and then we'll probably dive in in the middle of all that and figure out how some you know a coach can can answer that so um let's let's jump right in so um first what arnold said about yeah jeff just posted it too this is how I host my team calls as well, and it works so well. If you guys have questions, just start typing them in the, uh, in the chat. No Disney related questions here. And Melissa laughs, of course. Melissa's one of my top coaches on my team, and I can see her with her little baby, Charlie. You guys are so cute. So if you guys have any questions, that way I can, I can just answer them as I'm talking if it fits, and if not, then I'll answer it at the end. Um, but <laughs> you guys are so funny. I'm loving this already. So keep talking, and I'm going to be sharing seven tips and each tip is going to have an action item because I am all about these trainings and all about being on these calls. But if you don't have any action item associated to it or don't do anything with it, then it does nothing. So I hope that you guys are taking notes because um, I tend to talk quickly. So, and it's a ton of information. Like I'm literally sharing everything. So I hope you guys are ready and buckled up because we're doing this. So again, just post your questions and I will answer them as I go. So tip number one, of tips to basically crush your social media and find your brand and basically build you ink online. You don't have to. Oh, I'm just gonna make sure that everything. So hang on, just one second. Let's make sure that everybody's muted. That's weird. It's if not you're on the phone. If you would mute yourself, really appreciate that. If you're on the phone hearing this. And I'm looking for who that is. Arnold, you may need to. It's 403 585 8379. So 
Okay, so hang on just one second. <laughs> Muted. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. Back in business. Back to focus. I'm like a goldfish. I get very unfocused very quickly. <laughs> so tip number one of your seven tips, like I was saying, this is basically my seven tips of everything that I've come to know over the past more than two years now, just being on Instagram and Facebook, and this really applies to all social media platforms, and how to crush it and find you. So hands down, tip number one is to figure out what makes you, you. As a coach, you are amongst a sea of, what is it now, 350,000 plus coaches. It's an insane amount, I'm sure it's more by now. And you have things that you have in common with all these coaches. And I think the best training that I ever heard as a new coach was, I think by Lindsay Matway, and she said, take a piece of paper and fold it in half, and on the left side, list everything that you have in common with all of these coaches. So everybody on this call right now, we all have the products in common, we have our coach websites in common, we have the platforms that we can reach people in common. There's so many different things that you have in common. You have trainings like this that you can all access, but what makes you different is what I listed on the right side of that page after I fold in half, and that's things like my weird Disney obsession and the fact that I love pink. Like if I could turn this and you guys could see how much pink in my office, like my husband hates it, but it is, it's, it's the real me. And yes, I'm a little bit weird, and yes, I talk a little fast, and yes, I have a ridiculously huge smile when I get upset or excited, but I, I, and I, I do a weird little happy dance. These are all things that make me oddly me, but it's who I am. So I listed all those things. So things like my passions and my interests and my hobbies and things that motivate me, um, inspire me, things from my daily life, who my family is, my dog, hopefully you guys know Carl, he's awesome, maybe he'll make an appearance. When the camera's rolling, dogs know. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like they know. Um, any of your beliefs, like if you're, if you're into a certain religion or anything like that, any knowledge that you have. So for me, I love talking about social media. It's a knowledge that I've built over the years, and I love talking about it. It's not difficult for me to talk about it. Um, any skills that you have, if you love to garden, like whatever. So all of these things, if you list that, that's what makes you you, and that's how you find your you brand. It's, it's just what's going to make you unique. So on the right side of the paper – is your brand. That's what you need to focus on. You don't need to focus on pictures of challenge packs that 350,000 other coaches have. You need to focus on what makes you, you. So your action item for tip number one is to find your five. So out of those lists, that the long, you should have a super long list on the right side of the page. Find the things that make you, you, but pick five of them. So for me, they're listed right in my Instagram bio and in my Facebook bio. There's Disney, there's um, like a food, a foodie, a fit foodie, um, food is strong. So my story as a beach body coach is odd, I thought, and I hid it for a long time. I actually gained weight on my beach body journey, and I hid that forever. And when I realized that that's what made me unique, I had so many customers and coaches that had a very similar experience to me that were almost attracted to me because that's what they led, and that that's what happened to them. So. That sharing that and being open and honest, not being so afraid to share who you are. And as soon as I shared that I was a Disney freak addict, it brought on a bunch of other Disney freak addicts. And our team now is over a thousand people of crazy Disney fanatics. It's wild to me, but as soon as I accepted that's who I truly was, I think our knowledge said today that I need to enter like Disney Anonymous or something. <laughs> it is what it is. But so as soon as you can truly accept that and share that on your social media, I feel like that's how you're going to attract like-minded people that you enjoy working with and enjoy helping in your challenge groups. So finding your five. And the reason why I pick five is that way you're, you know what you're posting about. You're not all over the place posting about all sorts of crazy stuff. And that's what you should be sharing in your profile. So step number one, obviously, to social media is setting up your profile. So I always suggest sharing who you are, not what you do. So if you have Beachbody coach in your profile, that's what you do. That's not who you are. So I don't have that anywhere. I have Skinny to Strong. I have Fit Foodie. I have Disney Addict. And you can go, I think there's Wanderlust in there. I love to travel. So these are the things that make me, me. And that's your action item number one. So um, tip number two would be to suit your strengths. So now when you start posting on these different platforms, um, you need to figure out what your talent is and what you're good at and what you care to be good at. So as I said, there's many platforms. There is now Periscope, there's Twitter, 
there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's Pinterest, there's Blogger, there's YouTube, there, and the, the list goes on. Like, it's insane. You can't be everything to everyone. You have to find something that you enjoy. So if you are not a person like me that cannot fit a 140 character sentence or whatever you want to consider that into like what you have to say into 140 characters, then don't go on Twitter. That's not, Twitter is not my playground. I cannot hang with Twitter. So I know that that's not going to work for me. Furthermore, I am physically unable to sit down and type an entire blog post. So I don't. What I do is I like live video. I've gotten good at them and I, I've worked on and I've perfected it over the, couple, over the past couple of years. I love Instagram. I always have because I am cool with posting a picture. I'm good at photography and putting a quick caption. Simple. And it's done. And it's a pretty picture. So those are the platforms that I focus on. And then what I do from there is I take my YouTube videos, for example, and I outsource onto a website like Fiverr or to an assistant for like $5. I'm not talking like crazy money here, guys. I just mean like outsource it to somebody on Elance or Fiverr and they will transcribe your video for you into a blog post. So that way you can outsource. So when you're thinking, well, Angie, you're lying. I, I saw you on Twitter or I saw you on Facebook. What I do is I share from the other platform. So my Facebook posts go to Twitter. My YouTube posts go to Twitter. My Periscope posts go to Twitter. So I'm not on Twitter, but I'm there. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just really focused primarily, I would say, on Instagram and YouTube. That's it. And the rest is shared to Facebook. Once in a while, I'll share a Facebook posts, but I'm not on there. Because personally, Facebook doesn't do it. And that's, that's your action item number two is find your playground. Find a social media site that interests you, that you can stay consistent with, and that really juices you. Oh, I just read a question. Another do we have any, or we have annual passes for Disney? I thought you were asking if we did. I said, I, I was going to say, I wish we don't. We're Canadian, so no so, guys. <clears throat> so Angie, one of the things I'm gathering is you need to find your strength. Mm -hmm. You need to find who you are. And then yeah. you've got to be more of, of, of a specialist versus try to be a generalist and be all over the place. Yeah, don't be everything to everyone because you're going to drive yourself crazy. You're not going to stay consistent with it. And that's the worst thing that you could ever do on social media is not stay consistent because you're showing the world that you're not trustworthy or able to stick with one thing for longer than like two weeks. Okay, thank you. That was my question is what's the effect on the people that are following you, right? Like, yeah. you know, what, you know what, what message are they getting from you? Are they getting the message of, man, you know, Angie likes to try different things or are they getting, Angie's confused. She's not, she doesn't yeah. know where she stands. Yeah, it comes off as you're confused and if you're being real with yourself, you're not going to be able to stay consistent with those platforms. If you're trying to do everything everywhere, there's no way. So when I picked up, for example, Periscope is the newest social media platform and I encourage you to get on it. Jeff is on it and Jeff watches my scopes and it's really fun. It's, it's a great way to, and I always encourage my coaches to get on it. It's a great way to get used to doing stuff like this and talking on video, which is a fear for a lot of coaches. And it also helps your confidence with this, which is very important for coaches. I feel so if it's just you getting on Periscope and filming a quick five minute tips to being healthier and more fit, then so be it. And you just do, you can do broadcast daily and it's live. It's very, very cool. Um, so that, what I was going to say is by picking up Periscope, I knew that I had to let go of something else. So what I did is I kind of shifted away from Facebook a little bit. And all I did was I just shared from the other platforms so that I'm really not focusing my energy and my time on all of these different things, plus my challengers, plus my coaches. I'm really focused on one or two platforms that I know that I can do very well. So it's kind of one of those concepts, you're not going to do it well, then don't do it at all. Awesome. So find your playground, determine your social media uh, platform that works for you. So tip number three, hopefully you guys are following along. We can do a quick recap at the end. So tip number three, and anybody that follows Shalene Johnson knows this, find your lifers. A lifer is somebody that, like I said, is attracted to you. It's somebody that gets you, that you don't have to try and sell them anything. They just, they like you. They want to join what you're doing. They don't care what program you're doing or what, what thing you're trying to sell or what try it, type of shape you're trying to sell them or anything. They just want to be a part of whatever you're a part of. And that's the magic of having a really, really great brand and being very relatable. So finding your lifers is basically your target market. And the way that you do that is you, I'll give you your action item right away. You need to make a customer profile. 
And that can be actually very fun and very simple. You can open up a, a magazine or you can open up Google and start Googling images. And all I personally did is I, she's not on here. She's not a, she's not a coach yet, but she's a girl that I met on Instagram. And I look at this girl and I just think we should be best friends. Like, why aren't we best friends? Like, do you guys ever see Step Brothers? I'm like, do you like guacamole? That's how I feel like she's my person. Like she's, she's at the other end of the world, but she loves Hawaii. She loves Disney. She is adorable and loves fitness and just everything about her encompasses everything that I stand for. And I feel like we're just twinsies, but at the other end of the world. So what I did, and the girl doesn't know this, but I printed her picture and I printed out uh, some of her Instagram pictures and also picked like I Googled pictures of things that she represented. And I just made a quick visual for me to be able to visually we see it with some keywords. So this is why it's so important to me. I was always told to do this and I didn't understand why. Like I took business in school in university. I had business course and I didn't get it. I didn't get why it told me this, but I'm going to tell you the real reason why hashtags. And I bet you they didn't tell you that in school, but this is why. So when you figure out where your ideal customer likes to shop, what they like to eat, where they hang out, all of that stuff, like what sports they do, what their favorite workout is, like those crazy things that make them who they are. And if you can get as detailed as possible, um, you can figure out exactly what to hashtag, find out where they hang out on, on the internet. And for me, I know that my target market's on Instagram because the people that are on Instagram tend to be a little bit younger and a little bit more, well, the people that I follow are a little bit more into health and fitness. And if I hashtag Disney or spe specific things like hashtag Disney addict, I'm going to find my target market and my lifers. So that's your action item is to figure out who your lifer is, figure out what your post customer profile is and use images and use keywords so that it's visual for you. And like I said, you're going to know where to post. You're going to know what to post. You're going to know how to post and you're going to be talking to that one person. So it just makes it that much easier. And you're going to find that, your team is going to be filled with people that remind you of this person and your challengers are going to be those people and people are going to be more drawn to you because you're not, again, trying to be everything to everyone and your page is just going to make that much more sense. So that's my tip for not trying to blow your brains out, trying to find everyone in the entire world. If you guys have questions, but you can stop me whenever, by the way. So we're moving on. Tip, or Arnold, do you want to just unmute yourself? Do you have a question? No, I, I'm, I was going to say, keep going. I think this is great, and, and we're awesome. starting to see kind of, you know, where the train is going. So, a ton of awesome. questions waiting for you. Love it. Okay, so tip number four, consistency. I say, my team probably hates me for saying this. I say this probably every day to them. Consistency is key, especially in social media. So, um, I read a fun fact once that the, the, these top YouTubers and these top bloggers in the world, the people that you see on Instagram with, like, millions of followers – they did some sort of a survey, and I'm very much paraphrasing right now, but they did a survey over the span of whatever amount of time that how these people got millions and millions of subscribers, followers, readers on their blogs, whatever it may be. It wasn't that they had the best content. It wasn't that they were like beautiful or any sort of very intelligent, anything crazy like that. It was that they posted content consistently over the span of two years. And I can tell you firsthand, that's what I did. And I can also tell you firsthand that my content on Instagram was nothing phenomenal. I promise you that. Um, it was like me high kicking. I said like, you can do it across the picture. It was not that great. But I did, I posted at least three times a day, at worst once a day, I never missed a day for two straight years. That's how you grow a following. And following other people, follow, following other blogs and other YouTubers, that's all they're doing. They're just incredibly, incredibly consistent. So having patience, having faith, never slowing down. Like I said, I used to post and I'd get one like on my pictures and it was me clicking like, and I didn't care. I kept going because there are people watching and the, the momentum that you're building with any social media platform really is the same thing with Periscope, which is the newest one. The more consistent I am, every time I do a Periscope, I gain followers. So quantity over quality. Absolutely. Don't just post a post. So if that means one post a day instead of three, then so be it. And I'm going to share um, a little bit more on that in in the coming tips. Yeah. Oh, in this tip. Yeah. This will be the action. Item, so that has to do with that. So, um, the other thing, so never slow down, believe in the products, believe in yourself. And this is something that I learned from an amazing book. And I'm going to talk a little bit about personal development and what it has to do with social media in a little bit, but there's an amazing book by Gary Vaynerchuk. 
and don't ask me to spell his last name, but it's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And I might have it. I do have it. I never have the books that I'm looking for. So I can show it to you guys. And the concept of this is about consistency. And the concept of a jab, so this is what it looks like. Somebody wants to screenshot that um, or type it in the comments. So the concept of that is that you're adding value and that's to answer your question over quality versus quantity. A quality post is that you're adding value. If somebody can look at that or remember that and be like, wow, she really helped me. You either inspired them, you taught them something, add value three times a day to five times a day. That's an amazing amount of jabs and you're providing value to your customers and that is how you keep them coming back. So what you do, and this is how you can provide quality over quantity if you don't have the time, plan ahead. So that's my action item for consistency is planning ahead. The top coaches, this is what they do. And I'm basically letting you in on their secrets. So hopefully you don't tell them that I told you this. So what I do, I either plan all my posts ahead. I backlog content like a beast. I have files and files on my computer. When I go out for a walk, I'm taking pictures. Do I post it that day? No. I keep them all on my computer. And when I need to have a post to post, I have stuff. I don't just randomly hold up my Shakeology from this morning and, <laughs> and take a picture of me kissing it because that's random and that adds no value. But what I do is I have thought through posts that are backlog and also do, which is new information is, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Hootsuite. You can use it for Facebook to schedule your Facebook posts or your Twitter posts. It's available for Instagram as of this month. Oh my gosh, I know. So you can schedule out your entire flipping month if you want to and post every single day. And that way there's zero excuse. If you go on vacation, you can literally let go for a month and you don't have to worry about posting because you're scheduled. So that's a great way for me to add value to people and stay consistent and getting that jab. And like I said, the jab is basically in this book, he talks about how to get your story across and how to market your products and how to talk about it without talking about it. And that's the power of the jab. You're basically planting little seeds in your story. You're leaving little breadcrumbs of that you're a coach, that you have a challenge group without saying, Hey, here's my beach body store link. And here's my website. And you can email me for more information. Join. You don't want to have every post say that you want to just share your story. And that's the power of a jab. So just saying, Hey, got my workout in today and I did the 21 day fix. And it's a picture of yourself. I don't know, at post workout with your running shoes on and it's just something that adds value. And with an inspirational quote, that's an amazing post. And people remember those. I, I think my best posts are the ones that I get a comment of somebody saying, um, I really needed to hear this today. Thank you. That's my favorite comment that somebody could ever write because I know that I helped that person. So that's what I strive for. So that's number four consistency. And the tip for that is to plan ahead. Oh, thank you. Okay. So number five, and this goes hand in hand with number four, deliver the goods. This is the roadblock. I think for almost every coach coaches have trouble letting the world know that they're a business and that their doors are open and that they can help people. So you have to deliver the goods. You have to have that right hook like in the book. And what that is, is inviting people to your challenge group, inviting people to your team, letting them know that you have a website, letting them know that you have a blog, inviting them to something, basically you asking something. And that's the purpose of the jab, 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 right hook. So that you have a set of jabs all week, let's say for seven days and you've added value. And then on day seven, you hit them with the right hook and you let them know, Hey guys, I'm open for business. And this is where you can go to get help. That way people don't just think that you're a pretty face that loves Shakeology that likes to kiss their Shakeology bottle. I feel like that's what a lot of coaches come off as is just somebody that likes to do size and share their dance routine on YouTube or likes to post pictures of their smoothie or whatever. You have to show people that you have something to offer. So that's the purpose of your right hook. So your action item is to plan your right hooks. And what I personally do is I set out a schedule. So I have a full month and I wish I had in front of me. I have a big calendar where I say this day, I'm going to be inviting my Facebook following, my Instagram following to my challenge group. And this day I'm going to be sharing that I'm doing an internship and I have training for my team and this is how you join. And then this day, so you plan it all out. And in between there, you make sure that you're adding value so that when you're asking for something, people know, okay, this girl's for real. And if she's been adding this much value all week, I can only imagine how much I'm going to get out of her challenge group. 
that's the purpose of doing that and also letting people know that you're a real business. So I'm going to take a sip of water before I lose my breath. But um, if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to type anything and nothing is off limits. I swear I asked a million questions when I first got started in social media because I just didn't, I needed to, I feel like it's like a learning game. And that's the next tip actually. So the best right. What are some of the best right hooks to deliver? Well, the way that I do it, I, I think that the best right hook that gets the most impact, if I'm being real, is a before and after of you. So the sooner you can get results, the better. Um, I have to say that the ones that I post, and like I said, I went from, I gained weight or I stayed the same. So I really don't have any amazing transformation. You guys can go see it, but in my transformation, I make it impactful. So I can tell you guys exactly what my most impactful right hooks look like. Um, on the left, I'll have my picture of what I used to look like, which was very skinny and very frail and just clearly not healthy. And on the right, I have my new healthy appearance where I'm much more confident, but what I do, and this is what's impactful, this is what resonates with people, I share my weight on the bottom and I share the dates, they're the same. And that, when my message is basically that your, the scale shouldn't define you. I'm all about not getting on the scale. And I talk about that a lot and I think that that really inspires people and really resonates with them because a lot of people define themselves based on the scale and that I think is the most impactful way. But you know why it's impactful? Because I'm being real and I'm just sharing something that's very personal that I was almost scared to share before. So that's what you have to think about. Anything that you're really scared to share is usually the best right hook. No scale victories, exactly. So this kind of leads into tip number six, like I was saying. So you need to school it up. I, I feel like people think this and it's so not true. Social media is not some God given gift. Like God didn't come down and bestow Shalene Johnson, like 400,000 Instagram followers. She worked her tail off and she schooled herself. And just like anything else, like I know that you guys probably listen to training all the time. Like you're on a training right now. You need to listen to training and personal development on social media. That's all I do. I have books on books on books and YouTube video trainings, and a lot of it is free. That's the best part. So I'm going to share some with you that go from, I guess, cheapest to most expensive. Yeah. So um, one thing that's free that I love is The Shaleen Show and Build Your Tribe. Those are two podcasts that, honestly, I can't believe that she doesn't charge for that information. It's fantastic. And the other thing that's free, obviously, is you can go on YouTube. Any platform that you don't quite understand, YouTube it. And I even have some videos up on YouTube that can help you with Instagram or Facebook or Periscope or anything like that. Um, those are free options. And then in terms of just the best books, obviously, Jab, Jab, Right Hook is awesome. Um, the Art of Social Media. So if I'm being real, I don't think I see, I never have the books I'm looking for. So if I'm being real, I don't love huge books. And this book is like the best. It's super little and it's 101 tips to crush it on social media. So it's by Guy Kawasaki. Um, he is, I think he worked for Apple. I feel like my husband can hear me. So he's going to yell it because <laughs> he knows, but he, this guy's awesome. And he talks, he talks all about social media. And what I love is he covers all social media platforms. He even cover, covers Google Plus, which is a great platform itself. So he just gives 101 tips on how to crush it on social media. And I don't know the name. I think it's just 100. What is it? The Art of Social Media. And it's like 101 something by Guy Kawasaki. Another one is To Sell as Human by Daniel H. Pink. I don't know about you guys, but do you always get the question um, when you're talking to people about coaching, do I have to sell? And my answer is you sell stuff every day. Like me convincing my husband to go or get a certain type of food for dinner is me selling something. You guys sell stuff to people all day long. And that's what he talks about. It's just ways how our society does that and how he talks about social media. And he just talks about the concept of how to connect with people and communicate with them to properly sell stuff. Even if that, it, oh gosh. Oh wow. Thank you. I was like, what is happening? Um, but now my notes are gone. <laughs> thank you. So to Sell is Human by Daniel H. Pink, and then Jab, Jab, Right Hook, and then a great two resources that are a little bit more expensive, um, and I don't feel like I've talked about this platform, and it's an amazing platform. Pinterest is awesome, and another platform that you can totally dominate. I signed up for something called Pinfinity, 
which is by Natalie Jill Fitness. And you can just go to getpinfinity.com. I'm not affiliated with it. It's just, it's awesome. And it's trainings like that that I've done. So there's the Instagram impact by Shalene Johnson and all of these academies that I've done online where you basically watch video trainings like this and she helps you through getting, you need something? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can just hear Carl and my husband like waiting in the hallway. Are you going to get food? Sam, okay. Right oh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So you have these academies that are basically video trainings, just like this, that are in snippets of like either 30 minutes or 10 minutes. And they walk you through everything that they know and they're credible sources. So there's the Instagram impact by Shaleen, there's Pinfinity and there's, if you really want to drop big bucks, I told you I go from free to most expensive marketing impact Academy by Shaleen Johnson is business changing. And if you have to split it with a couple friends or ask for it for your birthday, I don't know. It's amazing. So you really have to school it up. So my, I guess my action item would be just pick one. Just even if that's the free one and commit to it, like figure out how you're going to get better at learning about social media. And then the last tip, which is inspired by Shanti, um, the vortex of social media. You need to find your life. Do you guys ever hear Shanti say that? I die every time he says that. But I feel like, and everybody has their, their worst, their worst platform for this. For me, it's YouTube, but I feel like we hop on these social media platforms and yes, they're part of our, our job as coaches, but it becomes like this suck of our time and you go into this vortex and you come out two hours late and you're like, Oh my gosh, where was I? And that's me with YouTube. I was telling someone today, I cannot physically get on YouTube without getting sucked into like a Jimmy Fallon video from the day before or something random. And it's so bad. It's so bad. But I, if you know your triggers, you need to be able to, for, to be able to separate business from all of that time you're spending going through your Facebook albums and just all the crap. Like, seriously, I feel like we do that. Like, we scroll the feed and we're like, I worked for three hours today. No, we were scrolling the Instagram feed for three hours today. So I think that I hear this all the time, too, is that we're all so busy. And I think in a world where social media kind of dominates, we think that we're busier than we are. And it's really awful. So my action item, and it's literally the best thing I learned this year. Are you guys ready? I'm so excited. I have implemented this since March, and I have not changed it and it's it's like changed my business so it's called kill the news feed and it's an app that you can download to your computer and it kills your news feed so when you hop on to facebook it's going to tell you stop wasting your time on facebook and there's nothing on your news feed it's blank like i wish i could show you guys right now but if you if you google it you'll see it so it's a chrome app and it works just like a phone app and i don't know if uh, people always ask me is there one for the phone you know what if there is please tell me because i need one on my phone and I, it's funny, I don't have the app on my laptop because I don't use my laptop as often. And when I do get on my laptop, I'm like, wow, I waste a lot of time on Facebook. You really realize the difference because you hop on and your instinct is to start scrolling and reading the trending topics. It gets rid of the trending topics too. It's awesome. The only thing is you might not know what's going on in the world, but that's okay because half the time it's about the Kardashians. So you're, I feel like this is literally something that could help you. I feel like everybody's so excited to keep hearing, yay. It's, it's the best. So um, I can post the link in the Canadian Diamond Group. I guess that might be the best spot. Um, but if you Google it, you'll find it. It's a Chrome app, and I'm sure it exists for other browsers, but that's what I personally use. So those are my seven tips. That's a ton of great information. And so if you've got any extra things, yeah. um, Angie, like resources, tools, mm -hmm. different things like that, I will yeah. put it in the show notes of the okay. recording. And so if you've got links to those books, links to um, some of those apps, please send them, you know, send them over and I'll post there. Okay. Um, so make sure that um, this is the time that you're asking questions. I've got several questions. I've taken a ton of notes. Um, these are some incredible, incredible tips. Let's talk about when the rubber meets the road, right? So social media is your storefront. And then you've got people coming to your storefront, kind of looking inside, window shopping, and some get inside and start looking through the pictures and the posts and all that, right? Um, first question is, do you have a rule of how many people you add a day? That's the first question. Yeah. Then the second question, these are complete strangers for the most part. Um, what do you do to connect with them? Is there a script that you use? It's like, 
Hey, how are you? Yes, yeah. how are you, you know, I did you the other day. Like what work, what has worked for you for the coaches listening in? Um, so to answer your question about adding people, it kind of ties into the other one. And I'm so sorry if you guys can hear squeaking in the background. He's like my child. And I told you, he knows when the camera's rolling. Um, so anyways, his father will be back. We'll take care of him. But I'm sorry for the distractions. So in, in your question of adding people, I don't do that. If I'm being totally honest, I don't just randomly add people because I feel like that's not a true connection. And I think our job as coaches is to form connections. So what I do before I add anybody, I really make sure to look at their page and if they're a lifer, I comment and I engage with them. Just like if I met them at a bookstore, um, usually the conversations revolve around Nike shoes, Disney, things that I love, but it's what gets a conversation going. So it's very genuine. It's not just, I think my biggest pet peeve is getting comments that just say love or cool or that's, that's almost spammed me. I feel like you're not trying to, you don't really care about me. And I often do see a lot of coaches doing that. They don't even take the time to realize that I might be a coach. So what I personally do to add followers and to get friends, I just, I comment like crazy. I go, I search those hashtags I was telling you about on, in terms of finding your life first. So I will search Disney addict and I will go find people to be friends with. I just look for friends on social media. And I was looking at my um, following list today, the people that I follow. And there's people that have been on my following list for year, like two years now. And they're awesome people. And I'm close with them. Are they all signed up on my team and all coaches and all challengers? No, but they're awesome, awesome people. So I feel like that's what I strive to do is just connect with as many people as possible. In terms of what I say, it's very, very genuine. I just talk about something that they're interested in. I talk about them. So if they posted a picture of shoes, I ask them where they got them. And I get the conversation rolling that way. And never is my intent to kind of veer the conversation towards the challenge group or anything like that. It's just about them knowing who I am. So that, I hope that answers your question. Absolutely. It sounds like you customize it, essentially. Um, and, I would just, and I would think that for your new coaches or for new coaches that are listening in, um, you're saying be yourself and yeah. be a friend, right? And only yeah. add friends. Um, don't sell. Oh, okay. Don't sell. Don't sell. So connect, no scripts, just be yourself, have a ton of conversations. Those are going to, you know, come into yeah. your customer or coach. So I've got a follow-up on that and I've got uh, two more questions coming up. Mm -hmm. My follow-up to that um, is, is when you, when you have so many connections and so you're talking to so many people from Instagram, you know, from everywhere, how do you organize that? How do you know that, you know, I'm, I'm speaking to Sophie and then Jeff and Toby and they like football, they like hockey, they like Disney. Like, uh, is there a system that you use to get all your social media organized? So I talk, and I think that this is a misconception. When you look at coaches that are in the top challenge pack sales and you hear them on the national wake up call or coaches in the top 10, they're talking to a ton of people. They're connecting with a ton of people and they're, hitting they're pounding the pavement like they're not just hoping to get it going with like 30 different people they have tons of conversations going so and i don't say this to scare you guys i actually went to an eric worry event um a couple weeks ago and i went with my coach melissa that is on here somewhere and we heard him say something that was so interesting he talked about he asked a six-figure earner to raise their hand and he said how many people would you say on average that you would tell your coaches to talk to and she said about, I think 30 is a good number. He goes, okay. He said, does everybody agree like 30? And I was kind of slowly nodding my head, but it was one of those nods. And I'm like, I don't feel like that's the right answer. And he um, asked a doctor, he said, is there any doctors in the room? And a guy raised his hand. He said, how many clients on average do you see a month? And he said, at least 500. And he said, that's, that's somebody that takes it seriously. That's the difference. And I feel like people in our business, they don't, they think that 30 is enough. And if I'm being real, I've talked to over 500 people this month. And I know that that's crazy. And I can tell you how I track it and how I do it. So again, please take notes because this information is gold. So what I do is I listen to Shalene Johnson. And she says that e emails are king. And emails are king. You don't have to have all of your Instagram following. You don't have to have their name written out. You have their email. And what I do once I have somebody's email, which tells me that person wants to deal with me, I keep that email in, I personally like Excel or Google Sheets, that's what I use, and I have where I got their email from, I have their email and their name. 
So if I found it on Instagram, I have their Instagram tag. If I found it on Facebook, I have their Facebook name um, and I have their name and their email. And tracking that is so important. And having those emails is everything because your Facebook account, by the way, could get deleted tomorrow. I've seen it happen or get hacked or you could lose all of your Instagram followings. But I have those emails and I have... I feel, I, Andre and I talked about it the other day, I feel like we're almost at 10,000 emails. And that was our goal. So instead of having a goal of something very superficial, like I want 100,000 Instagram followers, which means nothing, you could buy those. I don't suggest you do that. But how do I ask for emails? That's a call to action. So whenever I post those before and after pictures, instead of me saying, hey, go to my Beachbody website and purchase from me, I don't want them to that. I want to talk to them. So I ask them for their email. That's what I do. And then I talk to them via email. Instead of the awkward conversation on Instagram back and forth, which I never suggest you do, or even on Facebook, get their email, like talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. And yes, this takes time, but that's what the top coaches do. They spend their time talking to people on email and no, there's not templates and no, you can't copy and paste it, but that's what they do. Love it. So, Love does it. That, I feel like that was a really long answer. <laughs> You no, know, it absolutely does. Um, it absolutely does. So you, you've shared a couple, um, a couple apps. Um, and, and, um, one of the apps that you shared about was, um, kill your newsfeed. And the question was, um, how do you engage? There's a ton of questions. How do you I engage once you kill it? Right? Like yeah. you, after, only you, after your work is done, do you turn it off? Then, you know, then the app is back on, you know, how do you manage? It? Yeah. So I saw that question and it's, a, it's actually a really good question because I feel like that's a lot of people's concern. If you're thinking of your business, of your social media from a business standpoint, which you should, um, you need to go onto Facebook for just a couple things. If you're being real. So I log onto Facebook. I go into my team group, which is just in my favorites on the side. That's not, that doesn't kill anything. You still see your groups. And by the way, anybody that's ever overwhelmed with groups, I always suggest just add them to your favorites. Like you should have no more than 10 groups in your favorites. So I have my team groups. I have my personally sponsored group. You guys ne don't necessarily have to have that. I'm just trying to show you. I have a ton of groups going on. I have my challenge group and I just go through the list of 10 and I check into each first thing in the morning. And <laughs> that's Carl. And I do the challenge group and then whatever training I have going on and then any other group, any, any group like the Canadian diamond group is in there and that's all I do. And then I go into my messages, which is not killed either. And I follow up with any message of people I'm talking to and I reach out to people that way. You, there's nothing about the newsfeed that you need to see in my opinion, unless you need to check on your coaches, which I do. I have my top coaches that I focus on and I go check their pages. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. That answers that. Um, I, I love, I love the favorites, you know, because you know, this is a big wild world out there on Facebook, um, social media. The other one is, um, uh, from Jessica Hill. What is your uh, opinion on Instagram? Instagram? Um, I use it. I have used it, but it's really, really, um, it's new and it's finicky and I haven't honestly figured out if it's legit or not, if I'm being real with you. And I, all I keep hearing from people, and I'm, like I said, I'm very careful with it. I'll turn it on for like, I, not even a day because I'm so scared that it's going to shut me down. And all I've heard from people is that they've gotten locked out of their Instagram account for 24 hours. And that tells me that Instagram doesn't know that Instagram exists. So be careful because you want to make sure that, um, but again, that's one of those things that's, that's just sending comments out to people that, it's not really, I think that's the purpose of Instagram. It, 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 Instagram, in my opinion, is you send comments out to people, right? And it's, it's automated. You're not connecting with anybody, really. And I don't notice a huge um, incline in it unless you guys have, but I would just tread carefully, would be my opinion. And I just, think, Angie, you bring up a good point. Do your research. Um, all of a sudden, there's a lot of uh, consultants that will add hundreds or thousands of followers. I think it's important to always make sure that you understand who you're giving access to, you know, what their track record is, um, you know, and actually speak to people that have worked with them. I think same as Instagram, Instagram is a software. There's also all these people coming up saying, Hey, I can help you do this and that. So um, you bring and up. A too. With awesome. uh, if you get a message from somebody, that's fine. But um, again, if you guys follow Shalene Johnson, she got hacked. So she had, 440,000 Instagram followers and she now has about 340. That was just an effect of her getting hacked. She could have zero right now, but she got it. She got her account back, but 
that's all from sending passwords out to different accounts that you're not paying attention to like Instagram and you, I think that really just you putting in the work. And I think if you're being real with yourself, you have time to comment on like 10 people's pictures a day, which is more or less what it's going to do for you. So just doing it yourself and being authentic, you're going to gain more than that. So that's my opinion on that. Awesome. Awesome. Um, this is the top coach Academy and there's no question why Angie Belmar is a top coach. Um, you know, you don't, do you need to know it all, Angie? You seem to know a lot about social media. So this is a question, let's say from a new coach, do you need to know it all? No. Okay. I need to start. You need to start and apply these seven, you know, these seven steps. Um, yeah. the other question, this is Instagram specific and we'll wrap it up. Um, this has been phenomenal. And by the way, this is getting recorded. You'll get a chance to listen to it and take notes. If you didn't take notes the first time, I think it's hugely, hugely applicable to what you do. Um, the other question is what if you're not getting people talking back on your Instagram pictures, but you're having conversations with them on their pictures? Like how do you transition or do you transition? So if they're just not engaging with you? They're not engaging with you. You're more engaging with them, meaning you're going to their shop. They're not coming to your shop. Then keep going. Consistency. Consistency, longevity. Keep going. I did that for months. I kept talking to people, and people, people will build up, and people follow you as long as you're being authentic. And honestly, it doesn't take that long. Um, but if somebody's not engaging with you, move on to the next person. Keep talking with different people. You'll, there's literally a sea of millions of people out there. And I always tell people this, I'm from Ottawa, Canada. And I searched this yesterday in my back office, which is always good to know where the most of my coaches and my downline are from. They're from California. Technically the most saturated spot, if you're thinking about it, of where to find fitness people or beach body people because beach body was founded in California. And that is where the most of my coaches are from the other end of the world, like a nine hour flight from me. So social media is an endless pool of people. So just keep going. Excellent. Excellent. Millions. I think Facebook was, was just past a billion, you know, yeah. billion person mark. So lots of people there. Um, last question. And we'll, we'll finish up with uh, the elite three questions. Um, and the question is, do you DM, which I, which I would think is direct message a yeah. lot on Instagram or do you just stick with comments? Um, I don't DM. And this was something I learned in Instagram impact. I was talking about that Academy and I totally agree with it. It's creepy. It's so creepy. If I get a message on DM, unless it's total quality, then I might respond to it, but I'll take it to email. Um, every time I'm talking to somebody in comments, if they're interested, if they want to kind of town group or they want to just be a part of whatever I'm doing, I just tell them, Hey, what's a good email to contact you at? I don't even entertain it in the comments. I just cut it off of there. Either they add me to Facebook and sometimes people won't always be cool with that. It happens. Um, DM is direct messaging on Instagram. Somebody just asked that, but, uh, all it's just a little, exactly. Nobody even knows what it is. I didn't know it existed forever. I opened it one day and I had like 24 messages. I was like, where did these come from? And that's the thing. If you're taking your time messaging people, it, they're probably not seeing it. And I feel like it's a waste of time. I feel like commenting, um, people are going to see it and just get them off, get them onto email. Again, if you lose your Instagram account, you're not going to have that conversation anywhere. You're not going to have that contact anywhere. It could be gone. They could change their username and you won't have their contact information. So it's just, I feel like email is so much better. Brilliant, simple, and a system. I think it's yeah. awesome and, and certainly refreshing to see that you started as a customer. Your customer uh, became a coach, worked on yourself a ton, went through a ton of failures, and just learned what he took. Um, you know, all these seven steps are um, absolutely, absolutely um, applicable, and, and I think huge ones that you want to revisit. This is the Top Coach Academy with Angie Belmar, a nine-star diamond in Canada. We're going to wrap this episode up with um, what we call the elite three questions. Um, these questions are questions that we ask every single leader that comes through the Top Coach Academy. And, and these are the questions that we are going to wrap it up with. So the first one is fitness related. What's your number one fitness secret? I would say it's not really a secret because you guys do this every day with your challenge groups. But you, as a coach, you need to do it times 10. So accountability, but layers upon layers upon layers of accountability. And I saw Amy Silverman say this on Instagram once, and it's so true. 
she, somebody commented, and I don't know if they meant it sarcastically, but she had the best response. Somebody said, why do you post your abs every single day? And I don't know if you guys follow her, but she has had an amazing transformation over the past year, I would say. And she said, accountability. If I post my abs every single day, I know that I have to post it tomorrow so that pizza is not going to look so good tomorrow. It's great. Uh, layers and layers. So your social media, your challenge group. And that's why I always say, for me, I lead with the business. Everybody's different. Some people lead with challenge groups. Some people lead with the business. I lead with the business because I know that any coach that signs up on my team is going to have that extra layer of accountability because their income is going to reflect their fitness I don't know, potential or whatever they can commit to with their fitness. So it's that extra layer. So adding like layers and layers and layers and layers and having a success partner, all of these things are key to fitness. I think having a supportive spouse, that's another layer, all of these things. So that's, I would say my biggest secret, I guess it's not a secret. Uh, it's not a secret anymore. So we're uncovering secrets. That's part of what we're doing on the Top Coach Academy. Um, the second one is um, you've talked about a lot of personal development, um, a lot of books. Yeah. What would you say is your favorite one? Is a personal development book, program, author, um, system? You have to know that I'm not just going to say one. You have to. <laughs> There's no way. I like thinking of this, it's like, there's, there's no way to just think of one, but I know my favorites. Um, Tony Robbins, I've listened to him. I have listened to him on cassette since it's kind of mind blowing. Since I would say I'm six years old. Um, my dad used to play his cassettes in the car when he picked me up from school and we'd listen to Tony Robbins. And I went to unleash the power within, um, a year ago? No, two years ago now, two years ago now. Um, and it really changed my coaching career. So his book, awaken the giant within, is, I'm not kidding, a dictionary. It's huge, and you probably have to read it like 20 times to grasp what's in it, but it's life-changing. Um, if you wanna do the quick version, there's an audio book that's like two hours long, but he's phenomenal. He, to me, is the master of all masters, but I, looking at the books that I think changed me as a coach, one of the first books I read was Just Start by John Acuff, and you know how I said, like, do you have to know everything? No, you just have to start. So it's called Just Start, Oh, I have it. Yay. Just start punch fear in the face by John Acuff. And what I love about this book is, um, it'll change your mindset, but it's a good read. He's hilarious. So that would be a top book. And one more John C. Maxwell to me is everything. And his audiobooks are incredible because he has such a soothing voice and he just makes so much sense. And you know what? John C. Maxwell, I think has written something like 72 books or I don't know if that's his age or how many books he's written. It's crazy. But um, his, I think my all time favorite book from him is, what is it? Today matters. And it's all about how to have the perfect day, what he does every single day. And I think that he just gives his list and some of his books are very small, which I love. And I don't, I don't know if I have this one. No, I don't think I have it. No, no, I don't have it. See, I, I have so, there's like, I have literally personal development, everything. I have so many books and so many audiobooks, but you can find all of these. I think all of these are audiobooks. They are. And they're all read by the author, which is important to me. So that's my answer. Sorry awesome. for not saying one. No, it's, uh, it, it really grows to prove a point. When you're a leader, sometimes you go against the grain. Mm -hmm. I ask you for one, you give me three. <laughs> <laughs> you're blazing your own path love that all those are incredible books i just looked up a fact with john c maxwell he has sold over 19 million books he hasn't written 19 million books but he has sold over 19 million books and um has trained more than 5 million leaders um worldwide so um join that group he's he's uh, been a speaker at summit a couple of years ago he's absolutely phenomenal uh and the last question that wraps it up angie um is what do you think uh, separates those successful coaches from those that uh, never get started or fail in their coaching journey? Yeah. Um, I think in the span of these past two, I've been a coach for a little bit over two years now. And whenever I, I do more and more trains with my team, obviously. And recently I've tried to basically narrow it down to three things that I feel like that's always a big question. Like what do these top coaches do? And what separates them from everybody else? And recently, I've been able to basically do this into three words. And I think that it's consistency, which is the word of the day, every day, longevity, and passion. So obviously, longevity means you just don't give up. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to come down the road, what's going to come 
um, Summer Tucker on a wake up call and at Summit was saying one day she just walked across some quote on her wall. It could be that. It could be a, that you sign somebody that just inspires you to do something that you didn't think you could do with this business or that you, a new workout program gets launched that just resonates with you. You can't stop talking about it. You never know what's going to happen. So giving up honestly is not the answer. There's coaches that have been in this business for seven years that they might not necessarily be a top coach, but um, I just saw this on YouTube the other day and they're not a top coach. I don't even know who this person is, but they've been a coach for seven years and they just bought themselves like an acres and acres and acres in Hawaii. And they're in the millionaires club, I think, but I don't necessarily know who they are because they're not necessarily a top coach, but they stuck with it. So I think that that's huge. And then passion, like the, that's just people's BS meter is so sensitive. And I feel like if you're doing the workouts and you can't help but talk about them and you love Shakeology, that's all there really is to it. And that's all that I really do. I love coaching and I talk about it and I'm not full of it. I just, I live it. So that's, that's really the three and they work hard. That is <laughs> phenomenal. Consistency, longevity, passion. And I think the fourth one is keep it real. Get rid yeah. of the BS, right? Yeah. And yeah. you've done that extremely well. Guys, uh, we, we could talk to Angie forever and we have spoken for an hour. You've done absolutely phenomenal. Um, if, if, if people want to find you, Angie, where do they find you? Um, you can find me on Facebook. It's just facebook.com slash Angie B fit or Angie Belmar on literally everything on Periscope, on Instagram, Twitter. I might not be on there, but wherever literally it's just Angie Belmar everywhere. Uh, okay. And, and, and Angie Belmar, B E L L E M A R E. Angie, you've been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if you're watching this uh, video or you're on this Zoom cast, I want you to go on her page. I want you to thank her for taking the time out of her uh, precious day uh, with Carl. And of course, Andre. Yes, Andre counts too. And, um, <laughs> and, and sharing with us some really, really good tips that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you um, either here live or watching it, um, you know, apply and have a terrific end of the year. So if you've liked this episode of the Top Coach Academy, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, this will tell us that you want more of it and we'll bring more phenomenal leaders across the network like Angie Belmar, like Rosa Friesen that we had last uh, a couple weeks ago. And this will run every other week. Again, thank you for being on. This is the Top Coach Academy with Angie Belmar, Nine Star Diamond from Canada. Thank you so much.